Hello lovelies, it's me, Bitter Corella, and I'm once again here in the upward mobile of the backwards downward to talk about some dark tones by some dark writers. Which dark writer are we all talking about today? Let's ask the orb. Like we're talking about HP Lovecraft. Lovecraft. Good old Howard Phillip. No other writer, with possibly the exception of Edgar Allan Poe, has cast such a long shadow on the horror genre. And if there's anything to be said about H.P. Lovecraft, Rhode Island's favorite son, the guy who lived in a basement and could not get a job because he thought the Dutch were too swarthy, and was scared of fish, well, there's a lot to be said about him. Lovecraft wrote what he termed weird fiction, and which today we generally understand as cosmic horror. Now, in cosmic horror, the universe as we know it is an insignificantly small island of light and sanity in an unfathomably vast cosmic <laughs> void inhabited by no loving gods, but instead beings so powerful and so alien that they cannot even be comprehended by the limited human imagination. In cosmic horror, ignorance truly is bliss, and those curious fools who pry too deep into things that man was not meant to know will often pay the ultimate price, their sanity. Lovecraft is credited with creating what we call the the ch 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 Chala cha 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 lula cha ka ka cha 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 Kahulu? The Lovecraft is often is often credited with creating the Chalola mythos. Although what we understand as a unified mythos was mostly cobbled together by later writers like August Derleth from disparate Lovecraft stories, um, with some embellishments added. Uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with that. The Chalula, Chalupa, the Chalupa mythos, of course, involves um, Ch Chalupa, Nar Nargul, Nargul, Nargultop. <laughs> Yago, Sm Smogoloth. Space Cucumber, Gug, this guy, Slenderman, oh wait, that's Shalula again, and the, and the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young. How do you know if you're in a Lovecraft story? Well, let's look at some common features of the Lovecraft story. 
Number one, nebbishly academic protagonists. Lovecraft loved these guys. Your typical Lovecraft hero is some reedy academic who spends all his time in a library and decides to investigate ooh, some weird manuscript that he found. Lovecraft seemed to have uh, an innate affinity with the educated elite and really did not trust people who, well, you know, let's say he didn't really, he didn't really seem to trust the hoi polloi very much. Number two, weird cults, mostly populated by hmm, POCs. Gosh, a little problematic. In uh, the call of Cholulu, -la -lu -la -lu 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 -lu, we find that the eponymous cult is worshipped by, well, uh, Inuits, Chinese, Louisiana blacks, South Pacific Islanders, pretty much everyone who's not white. So apparently the white guys are the odd ones out. So, I mean, really makes you wonder, well, I mean, really makes you wonder who the weird ones are. Number three, forbidden things that man was not meant to know and make you go crazy if you look at them or think about them too much. Number four, incomprehensible things from beyond time and space that are so insanely weird that you, again, can't even contemplate them, except that they usually kind of look like a squid. Number five, descriptions that don't describe anything. Lovecraft has a reputation for very florid prose, and people often praise his descriptions, which is weird because... The one unifying trait throughout all of Lovecraft's work is that he does not describe things. He very often does that thing where he says, oh, it was so incredibly weird, it defies description. That trick gets old really fast. But you'll see it a lot, and not just weird things. Very often he uses that for things that can be described. For example, if the hero happens to go down to a uh, seaside tavern to interview some local ruffians, Lovecraft will always be sure to tell you that these ruffians are horrendously ugly. And they're just so ugly. Looking at them will make you be scared of their ugliness. When you see them, if you saw these guys, you would know they were just super ugly. They were the ugliest. Lovecraft will never actually mention any specific features of these people to indicate to the reader what exactly about them is so ugly. You just have to take his word on it. Number six, tentacles. Got a lot of those. I mean, they happen a lot, and of course, that's kind of what he's famous for. He's big on the tentacles. Number seven, racism. Lovecraft was super duper racist. Now, if you read his work, you'll find that he really did not like blacks, Jews, Asians, Slavs or Eastern Europeans, Catholics, the Irish, or German immigrants. Though he did profess a certain admiration for how the Germans in Germany were running things at a certain point. Oh, no. Lovecraft stories about awful monsters interbreeding with humans to create horrible new degenerate hybrid races of fishmen without seeing it as a very thinly veiled metaphor for miscegenation. Weirdly, despite Lovecraft's anti-Semitism, he was briefly married to a Jewish woman named Sonia Green. Although, in her memoir, she mentions that she often had to remind Lovecraft of the fact that she was Jewish when he went on his characteristic rants about the international Jew. Lovecraft himself never held a job because he was afraid that if he went out on the street, he might run into, say, a Dutchman. So, during their marriage, Sonia Green supported Lovecraft with a weekly allowance, which Lovecraft often complained was too small. Eventually, Lovecraft's constant whining, combined with his anti-Semitism, 
drove a wedge between the couple, and they divorced. Sonia Green is an interesting character in her own right. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that she's mostly relegated to footnotes in Lovecraft biographies. She was an amateur journalist and a horror writer as well. Now, she didn't write a whole lot, but what she did leave us uh, shows a real flair for traditional gothic uh, with ghostly midnight visits. Uh, she also combines it with the new hotness for big fishy monsters, which uh, may be partly because Lovecraft did help her edit her stories. Sonia Green was also a pivotal figure in early genre fandom. She helped bankroll a number of fanzines and was a constant fixture in early, uh, what were then called, amateur press conventions, and which we would today call well, science fiction, f science fiction or horror cons. In fact, it's at one of these things that she actually met Lovecraft and how they first got to talking. Another thing about Sonia Green is that apparently she also dated. Alistair Crowley. Though citation is needed on that, but if true, uh, I guess she just had a thing for big occult weirdos of the 1920s. And the thing about Sonia Green is she didn't just date, she went all the way. Because according to Sonia Green's memoirs, in stark contrast to Lovecraft's popular reputation as the incelliest of incels, Lovecraft actually smashed. Green said that he was adequate sexually, which is pretty good considering that she was apparently his only experience. Putting aside all of Lovecraft's problematic features, there's still a question about his writing. Was it any good? Well, he's got lots of fans today, but I'm going to go on a limb and say, no, it wasn't. Um, Lovecraft was uh, really good at the slow burn buildup of tension. If you read his stories, he definitely uh, really draws out the tension by having his characters just go through a very long process of discovery. And it, it, as a reader, it, it does, it's effective. Unfortunately, the payoff is generally kind of lackluster. Lovecraft kind of paints himself into a corner by dragging it out so long that uh, it's inevitable you'll be disappointed. For example, in The Call of Cholola, the author spends the entire story investigating this strange statue, which indicates a cult dedicated to this weird squid god. And when finally the squid god arrives in all its majesty and awful glory, um, they kill him by ramming with a boat. Nevertheless, uh, there's one thing to be said for Lovecraft, and he's really an ideas man. His ideas, though tainted with racism and xenophobia, did create a language that people have found uh, very applicable to different things outside of just uh, use for racism. Um, people can use, people have found the language and the metaphors of cosmic horror to apply to other things. It really speaks to something that people feel about the way the universe is actually organized. And for that, I mean, every, every horror writer since has had to grapple with Lovecraft's legacy. Now, modern writers have variously reimagined and reinterpreted Lovecraft's ideas to excise their racism and focus more on exciting things like the cosmic insignificance of man and unfeeling universe, and also tentacles. You can find plenty of Lovecraft homages in modern horror, from Nick Mamatas's Move Underground, which imagines uh, Jack Kerouac and the Beat Poets meeting Cthulhu, to Victor Laval's The Ballad of Black Tom, which reimagines Lovecraft's The Horror at Red Hook, as seen through the eyes of a black hustler in Harlem. Lovecraft's Elder Gods have also made occasional appearances in the works of Stephen King and Thomas Ligotti, and Laird Barron's Old Leech Mythos, while explicitly not Lovecraftian, does show a lot of Lovecraft influence as well. So, however you feel about him, he is definitely an enduring figure in horror.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little look at HP Lovecraft. If you did, hey, why not like or subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're not watching us on YouTube, then of course, don't do that because you can't. If you're watching us on Public Access TV, you can not do that at all, but you can check us out on Twitter. We're at midnight underscore pals, so be sure to check that out. Uh, we have lots of jokes about horror writers, yeah, so why not? Um, other than that, um, we'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your mortal coil. Who's <laughs> butter?